Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Phil Murray and today I'm joined by my good friend Raj Rudolph for another movie review for Boys on Film. How are you, Raj? I've been doing like you and I've redone my office background. <laughs> I've got to say, it looks quite fancy. <laughs> so does yours. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's just clutter. It's just CDs, just willy-nilly. Yours is organised. You should see under my desk. So today we're going to be talking about a movie which is called Nocturnal. It comes out in a couple of weeks. It's directed by Natalie or Natalie Biancheri, who apparently began her film career at the BBC. She's done a lot of documentaries for arts, history and science. I never knew any of this before I looked her name up online. Uh, she co-wrote it with Olivia Waring. I think this is... Olivia's second job. It stars Cosmo Jarvis, Lauren Coe and Sadie Frost. Are you familiar with these actors? Do you know uh, Cosmo? Because he's been in quite a few things on BBC. I think Peaky Blinders he was in. No, I did a little bit of digging after his performance in Nocturnal because I actually quite liked his performance. What a cool name too, Cosmo Jarvis. I know, yeah, like, he looks really cool too, doesn't he? You think that's his real name? Uh, possibly stage name. I mean, it, it sounds very drama, doesn't it? It sounds very fest. I noticed he'd been in a lot of sort of uh, British things before, but I'm kind of curious because he's in uh, Raised by Wolves, which is a new HBO Max sci-fi Ripley Scott show that is in my queue to watch. So, I'm, yeah, I'm excited to see it. Now. Yeah, because I was completely unaware that I'd seen him before. He was in a movie called Lady Macbeth, which stars uh, Florence Pugh, who we're both a fan of. And he was yeah. really good in that, but for some reason I'd just completely forgotten about him. Yeah, well, I think this movie, he obviously is one of the main characters, so he's getting a li little bit more leading man experience, I think. So we should set the scene, perhaps. It's set in the north. I'm not exactly sure where. I think it's meant to be a mystery. It looks like somewhere like Redcar or somewhere, maybe Yorkshire, I don't know, but um, it's quite a moody story. It's all about Pete, who is played by Cosmo Jarvis. He's a 33 year old painter decorator a bit of a handyman he has his eyes on a girl who's 17 that's laurie who's played by lauren co when i saw the trailer for this film and we when you told me we would review it i'm like oh phil's having me watch another slice of life <laughs> movie <laughs> i started watching it this morning and I was like, okay, well, I probably won't pay too much mental attention to it. I was obviously, I was prejudging the movie and serving the tea on it before <laughs> I even watched it. So don't judge a book by its cover because probably about the first twenty-five percent into the movie, I started to get into it, and um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. You know, it is a slice of life film, and I thought it was set in Dublin for some reason because they said Dublin at one point. I think they um, moved from Dublin, didn't they, to be in the north? I think um, Sally Frost, who plays the mother of Lauren Coe's character, um, I think they, yeah, they'd moved over. So I think that's probably why you, why you thought it that. was set in a very dreary seaside sort of community, which just breathes slice of life for me. It's a very British thing. So it tells the story of Laurie, who's quite a cynical schoolgirl, uh, building that secret friendship with Pete, an older man who's obviously. Uh, apparently obsessed with her. We should give a bit of background information on Lauren Coe, who's done quite a few TV dramas. I mentioned um, Florence Pugh. She reminded me of another actress as well, who uh, has been in quite a few big movies recently. I think one of those was Wild Rose, which came out last year. Who is she? You're going to help me, Jesse, Raj. Jesse Buckley. Jesse Buckley, there we go. She reminded me of her. I don't think it's just because the accent. I think they're very similar when it comes to... The portrayals, uh, her performance, I thought was fantastic. And Cosmo Jarvis, I thought they were both, you know, powerhouses. I was really excited to see Sadie Frost, actually. And uh, although her role is quite mi minor in the film, she does play the mother. It kind of like made me want to go and revisit all of those old Jude Law, Sadie Frost movies like Shopping and Final Cut and bent and you know when they had their heyday together because they were married at one point weren't they yeah, she's married to gary gary kemp from spanner ballet and uh, married to jude law but i don't think it yeah. lasted long i know they've got kids together there was a point in my life in the pre-2000s late 90s that i was obsessed with both of them and uh and now I was like, I, as soon as the movie was over, I went to imdb and be like what happened to sadie frost and she's been keeping busy but it was those like set of movies and time this sort of art house films that were a bit edgy that i kind of want to go and rewatch. so it kind of took me down memory lane a little bit but i think i was at the time i was probably 
more obsessed with Jude Law and I probably actually hated her because she was married to him. We have to talk uh, about the acting in detail because I think the acting in this, particularly with, the bo- with both the leading actors, is natural and powerful. I really believed in them as characters and I think for a drama like this, I think you need to have that believability factor. Definitely. I would agree. I, I just enjoyed it. It was a, it's quite a short film. Um, like, not like a short, but it was like, what, an hour, 20 minutes? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, 80, 85 minutes. I, I, yeah, perfectly packaged little um, independent movie, I thought. Yeah, definitely. It didn't outstay its welcome. I think some dramas like this can kind of drag on a bit too much. And I think, it, you know... It was entertaining. It's, it's really a spotlight on those two two characters. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot more of them in the future because although the story was a bit it was a bit predictable, but it was played out very well. Like I think it was really a character piece on those two actors. They're gonna get tons of work after this, I think. I think so too, and I really hope so, because I, I think they were brilliant. Can we talk about the cinematography as well? Because you mentioned the setting, very grim weather, we had crashing waves we had a lot of rain street lighting it it felt, <laughs> it felt quite claustrophobic i think the photography and the cinematography was brilliant and also the first 20 minutes of pete's character you don't really see much of him so there's a lot of mystery because you see the back of his head you don't really see him in front mm. i think that was really good because they were obviously building this big kind of tension about him as a character you know one thing that bugged me was that <laughs> about this <one? laughs> And it's more of a joke than a bug, but there's a scene where something is spray painted on uh, his uh, on his flat, yeah, I guess. Door, yeah. Painter, and he always has his paint thing with him. And like, when he gets home and he sees us, and he's in shock and awe. And uh, I'm like, well, why don't you just paint over it? <laughs> you can do it right now. Like, I felt that because I thought, oh, he has, he's just left it. He's gone running off. It's like first thing yeah. I would do is just completely scrub it, scrub it off. Yeah, and then apparently then one of the scenes after, he had scrubbed it off, but it was still legible. I'm like, why don't you paint it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Overall, for me, I thought it was fantastic. A really moody and powerful piece. I think it's a really strong indication that future movies for this director, Natalie Bianchieri, are, are going to be worth looking out for. Uh, I'm certainly going to be looking out for stuff that she does in the future. Absolutely. So the boys on film verdict then, eight out of ten for me. Um, I mean, I give it a seven, only because it was just a little dreary, but if... If it wasn't for the fine storytelling and performances, then I probably would have hated this film. Yeah. But uh, I quite like yeah. it. I don't know why it's called nocturnal, though. I mean, I know what nocturnal means, but... I guess a lot I of the drama happened at night time, didn't it? It's like they came alive at night. I guess. But there's a lot of daytime scenes, too, so uh, I don't know. So it's... Well, co- whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the film's called Nocturnal. It's out on the 18th of September. How is life over in EQ Music Blog HQ? It is good. It is good. Like I said, I just redid my work working space here. Can you hear me? <laughs> you want to see him, Jacob? Yeah, first time on Boys on Film. I love it. Yeah, look, it's film. <laughs> He's a professional when it comes to being on screen. Life at uh, EQ HQ is good. Um, we're starting to promote our playlists a bit more often and now they're getting uh, much more traction which is uh which is good so we're dipping more into the playlist curation bit Uh, we've just signed a new uh, management artist too the name of mickey taylor just shot a video uh, with him uh, last week uh, to duet with my other artist named lost child and mandy keeps cranking out the awesome electronic pop uh, music discoveries. So, uh, you know, outside of lockdown, there's been a lot of really good new music this year, which, you know, a lot of artists are primed just to hunker down and be creative and uh, make some good stuff. So, yeah, life is good. I've cleaned out all my storage uh, units and uh, got all my CDs back from storage and I went through them all and we've got a CD player now. So, I'm, I'm being a little nostalgic and, um, listening to cds again and because there's a lot of like uh rarities and remixes that just aren't available on spotify apple music or or title so or so not you know sometimes i like to listen to those old remixes that made me happy we were doing that last night i got back from being out um meeting polly for the vegan channel and i got back and i was going through all my vinyl and it 
I, I kind of forget how brilliant that is to just go through like you, you like you did when you're a teenager you know kind of going through your record collection I don't, don't get the time to do it anymore I have a very small vinyl collection and I don't even have my like record player out anymore but I started collecting 45s again just for the nostalgic factor yeah. <laughs> so I was like oh I remember this when I was a kid you know and I just really like the artwork that's what I miss most about analog music is the artwork factor of it which doesn't get a chance to shine through in digital music. So, um, you know, I miss that part of it. But yeah, I've been collecting 45s. I've been buying a lot of them off eBay. And, and yeah, I'm exactly the same. I'm, I'm really tactile with, with vinyl. I like to look at the sleeve notes. I like to know who's been a part of the process of, of making that yeah. music rather than just sticking it on and hearing it, which is fine yeah. as well. You know, I'm, you know, I've got so many CDs, as you could see, <laughs> behind just some yeah. of them. Um, but yeah, I, lo- I love my vinyl. And we should say also, we're going to be covering the BFR London Film Festival, which is next month. That's really exciting. I'm really excited about it. Although it's it's 90% digital this year. So um, since I haven't gone anywhere for holidays, I've taken a whole week off BFI Film Festival week just to watch films at home. So um, I'm looking forward to it. I hope they have a really good program because unlike some of the other film festivals that went digital at the last minute, you know they couldn't get the rights to clear a lot of stuff and uh, it just kind of ended up being bottom of the barrel for film festivals this year um so i'm hoping that fingers crossed that they've had enough time to sort out rights and clearances for uk um but the bfi always delivers for london film festival so we'll see but i'm very I was just going to say exactly the same thing because it's a, it's a venue that we're really you know fond of, and I was just thinking just recently with lockdown and all the changes and all the businesses that are affected by this, I would hate to see the BFI disappear because it's such an important well place and also it holds so much talent. And I think it'd be a shame yeah. for it to suffer. So we need to carry on supporting it. I think our movie theaters here are open, yeah. so hopefully they're doing well. I haven't ventured out yet to the movies. I keep saying I'm going to, but. I haven't done it yet. Um, I kind of want to go and see Tenet, the new Christopher Nolan film, but I'm kind of, I just keep getting sidetracked by all the good film at home. Like I'm blazing through TV series that I just dropped in the middle of (laughs) just picking up and finishing them off, uh, which is good. I finally watched Blade Runner, the original one for the first time the other day. I remember seeing it, but I couldn't remember the story. So I, so I watched it again, and a few things were familiar, but well, I, I think as you know, a 40-year-old versus you know someone in my teens when I watched it, you see things in, in a different light now. So, And kind of at night, I've been going to bed really late, um, at like 2 a.m. usually, but you know, I watch like a new movie, and then I like watch an old movie. So I've been watching things like Reality Bites and... Uh, all these old movies from the 90s and 80s that I used to love and I'm seeing them in a whole new light now so um, it's been cool I think it'd be really good to get back into some of those classic films and review them on this channel too because especially films that we both haven't seen that could be quite an interesting take on kind of the first reaction of a of a classic movie that we've both never never viewed let's do it yeah (laughs) So it's all coming up. Uh, Don't forget to subscribe. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it. And check out our British drama playlist too for suggestions of other films to watch. Stay safe and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us, Raj, too. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys.